I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn a strategy to estimate area under a curve from the given graph. The question here is estimate area under the given graph of f that's the function from x equals to 0 to x equals to 10 using 5 rectangles right so using 5 rectangles. So here in this case we are given a lower and upper bound as 0 and 10 right so we can say for us the lower value is 0 so we say a equals to 0 and the upper bound b is equals to 10 so if I divide this space into five equal rectangles then each will be how much wide so we can say that value of delta x will be equals to b minus a divided by number of rectangles in this case we have number of rectangles as 5 and therefore it will be 10 minus 0 divided by 5 which is 2. So each rectangle will have a width of 2. So let me make these rectangles first starting from 0 that's the 0 for us. So we have one rectangle which is this one. The other edge will be here right so let me just make these rectangles 2, 4, 6, 8 and then 10. So these are equally spaced 5 vertical lines whose boundary is from 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8 and 8 to 10. Now when we are estimating the area we can actually do the estimate taking left end points and taking right end points. Now if you take the, the left end point of the rectangle then we will do the lower estimate. So let me first do lower estimate. I may be in a position to use the same figure for higher estimate also. right? So when we do lower estimate since the curve is concave down it will be the left end points. Correct? So all these are very important points to remember. What does that mean? Left end points mean that when we form our rectangles, then, then this is the first rectangle. So I will take this point as my key position. So that becomes my rectangle, left end point. Do you see that? That's what I mean, right? So this rectangle will be that much. And then accordingly, I will just make some rectangles here five of them equally spaced and the space in between is as you can see two correct now when we say estimating area the lower estimate when we are considering the left end points will be equal to let me write this l for left right so that's the nomenclature l for left five rectangles we are taking right in this particular case is equal to some of these areas perfect some of these areas in general in sigma notation you could write like this sum of the height and the width right so height of this graph if this function is f right f of x will be given by the left side points is it okay so it will be the value of the function value of the function at x i minus 1 right x i minus 1 times delta x. So in the first rectangle if I write 1 here I get x0 right. So the value of this function at 0. I hope that is clear to you correct. Where delta x is a fixed value of 2 correct. So that is how we are going to figure this out. I hope these steps are absolutely clear right. Okay. Now in the first rectangle, so when we say x, 0 and all those things, we are trying to say that the first rectangle, the points are at, this point is x0 for us. This is the left side of the first one, right, or the right side of the one. So this we are calling x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4, and that is x5. Do you get an idea? Right? So these are the x values corresponding to our rectangles right so this is the left side 
of the first rectangle x0 do you see that so the value of the function at x0 that will be in this case 3 delta x will be 2 so that is this sum which we are talking about right so let's be very clear about it we could actually expand this form right and we could write this as f of x0 that is the one f of x0 times delta x plus f of x1 times delta x plus f of x2 times delta x plus f of x3 five of them right till of f4 will go right plus f of x4 times delta x right so we have one two three four and five rectangles and we are considering this area which is shown here right so so the area which we're talking about is this is the area of the first rectangle right so then this is the second rectangle which we are talking about then the third rectangle do you see that fourth rectangle right fifth rectangle so this is what we're talking about and that gives you area of the curve approximated by using the lower estimate the left end points right now as you can see in this expression delta x is common right so instead of delta x i'll save some space i'll write down two here okay or let me write delta x let me go one more step okay and then inside we have all these terms some of the values of the function at these points right so it is f of x0 plus f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3 plus f of x4 so one two three four and five terms right so the last we are taking the left side that is why we get to this value so that becomes a general formula which you could actually apply for any graph given such conditions do you see that okay now in our case now this is specifically for the given situation so we are given delta x as 2 so i'm replacing that by 2 now you have to read these values from the graph so value here is 3 do you see that 3 plus at x1 the value is uh, 6 right so let me write down 6 plus at x2 x2 it is 8 plus x3 x of 3 it is between 8 and 10 okay 9 and 10 so i'll take this as 9.5 right plus so 1 2 3 4 so we are we are already on the last one so x4 it is uh, we'll call this as uh, it's very close to to 11 right so we could say we could say 10.75 let me write 10.75 so the there could be error in reading this but anyway you understand the concept so let's multiply by 2 and add all these terms so it is 2 times within brackets 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 9.5 plus 10.7 5 bracket close equals to so we get a value in decimals it is equal to 74.5 so that becomes the lower bound for this particular calculation correct and you can see from here if you see the graph we have taken the area which is definitely lesser than the area under the graph and above the x-axis right now let's estimate the the upper bound of this area right so let's do that upper estimate for upper estimate because the curve is concave down we will use the right end points right so you, you also understand when to use what so if i use right end points instead of l let me write this as right and we are considering five rectangles right so it is uh, same expression i should have written i equals to from 1 to 1 to 5 right so those are the five values which we took so it is from i equals to 1 to 5 and now since we are taking the right side it is x1 do you see that right side of the first triangle it is x1 so f of x1 times delta x so with the same right so i mean uh let me write xi this is a general formula so so general formula xi times this so when i expand it 
at that time I get delta x is common right that is not changing so I can take it outside the bracket and then inside let me write some of all these terms so it is f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3 plus f of x4 plus f of x5 right so we have five terms one two three four five these are these five points one two three four five correct so that gives you the answer now on the graph it will look like what let me use another color so when i'm saying x1 we're talking about now this rectangle do you see that we have taken the value delta x delta x is right there right this is delta x right this value is delta x and f of x1 is that value so now we're talking about a bigger triangle do you see that bigger triangle that triangle we're talking about so that f of x1 is 6 for us correct so let me write down these values we already we have gone in details to show you how to really get it and this time we'll do a shortcut so delta x is 2 for you right you know and f of x1 is 6 right plus you could actually copy these values till the last value so 6 plus 8 plus 9.5 plus 10.75 Plus the fifth one, the right side is right there, right? So, so it seems to be 11. Is it okay? So that is 11. So we'll write down 11 here and then calculate. That's the whole idea, right? So remember this time, we're talking about bigger triangles. So the triangles for us are these. Do you see that? So definitely, as you can see, I'm lightly shading now since we are overlapping from the previous one. Normally, uh, you will see uh, different graphs for these things in your books and you should also draw different graphs uh, so right hand we are talking about correct so this is this is how it is correct so, so that is how these uh, uh, rectangles will be five of them and that's the top one right that's the top one and you can clearly see that the area bound by this right side is much bigger than the previous one so it is always the upper estimate when the graph is concave down correct let's calculate the value now so it is two times within brackets 6 plus 8 plus 9.5 plus 10.75 plus 11 bracket close equals to decimals it gives you a value of 90.5 is it okay so 90.5 so the value of the area we can say is between these two values correct so that's what you get so the right side is this so the actual area will be uh, let me write down here in a different ink so we got in unit squares the area is 74.5 and 90.5 so we can say area is is greater than or equal to the lower bound of 74.5 unit square of course and 90.5 right at times you may be required to check the middle value right so middle values normally will give you most accurate result right the most accurate result will be from the middle values you can see for yourself from the diagram at times you can also find the average of these two to estimate a better value of area while in this particular case we were interested in finding the estimate under the given curve so what we did was really two estimates we took and we're saying the area is somewhere between between these right anyway I hope you understand this process it is very very important process the steps involved are standardized and they are given different names also at times and you could also, as I said, take a center value to find the estimate of this particular area under this graph. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share, post your questions. Uh, feel free to um, suggest. And if you like, you can put some likes. Thank you and all the best.